Right Hand Man, a Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction. This is the third part of the Telltale Heart series, a four-part series that explores all four sides of the love square. Part one was called A Stolen Moment, and part two was My Dear Friend. If you missed them, I put links in the description box, or you can click on the card in the upper right corner of this video for the playlist. Enjoy the story! Adrian was supposed to be getting over Ladybug. He had decided after the night she visited him. It was the worst irony, since that had been the night he found out that she returned his feelings. But that was exactly the problem. All he wanted was to share his life with her. He wanted to spend time with her and ask her opinion about things. He wanted to know who her friends were and what she did for fun. He wanted to sneak into movies with her and text her at odd hours to find out what she was doing. But those were not things you did with a masked superhero. And though Adrian wanted to know her identity more than ever, that was one thing Ladybug would never give him. The secret identity was the only barrier standing between Adrian and the love of his life. But they kept the secret for the sake of Paris's safety. What they didn't know couldn't be tortured or manipulated out of them. And while Adrian didn't know what would happen if Hawkmoth got what he wanted, the fact that the two most powerful Miraculouses had been activated to protect against it was enough of a red flag. Thinking reasonably, Adrian clearly understood that it wasn't right to prioritize his own happiness over the greater good. He and Ladybug hadn't met under the right circumstances, and the current situation put them at an impasse. He was sure he would always love her, but the constant false hope that one day they could be together was going to drive him crazy. So he had decided the only way to preserve his sanity was to get over her. As Adrian reclined on a bench at the Place de Vosges, nibbling on a mini quiche, his chest felt heavy with the thought of never knowing who Ladybug was. Well, maybe not never. Maybe after they defeated Hawk Moth and gave up their miraculouses. No, that line of reasoning was giving him hope. There was no way of knowing how long it would take to defeat Hawk Moth or whether everything would return to normal even if they did succeed in doing so. Ever since the small hexagonal box had appeared on his coffee table, Adrian's life had gone from unconventional to the furthest thing imaginable from normal, and there was no use in pretending otherwise. Better to squash the hope before the longing for Ladybug destroyed him from inside out. Hey, are you okay? Marinette's hand was on his shoulder. He looked over at her and forced a smile. Yeah. Don't mind me, I'll be fine. She gave him a look that told him she wasn't convinced, but didn't press him. Looks like Nino's ready, she said, glancing at the temporary stage set up at the edge of the park where Nino was standing behind a turntable. Nino cleared his throat, tapping the mic to check if it was working. Hey dudes and dudettes, Nino here, he announced bringing you some fresh beats to brighten up your afternoon. Happy Heroes Day, dudes. And now, my girl Alia has something to say. As Nino started to man the deck, Alia came on stage waving to the audience. Most were park goers, lounging on picnic blankets, and there were a few others just standing around to see what was going on. Hey everyone, it's Alia from the Lady Blog. We're collecting donations for the Children's Hospital, and the Aggress Foundation has agreed to match each donation euro for euro. Step up and be a hero! You can find me out front with the donation box. Alia left the stage and took her position at a table set up nearby for donations. Adrian flashed Nino a thumbs up. He returned it with a nod and a grin, hands occupied. It was cool of you to help Nino set this up. Marinette said, opening a bag of croissants and offering Adrian one. Nah, I barely did anything. Adrian shrugged as he took a croissant. Anyway, you're the one who brought the people. Good job with the flyer. It had been Nino's idea for his Heroes Day deed to do some DJing at the park combined with a donation drive for the children's hospital. Adrian, Alia, and Marinette had jumped on the plan, eager to help. Thankfully, Heroes Day had fallen on a Sunday this year, 
giving them enough daylight hours to pull it off without interfering with the Agrest Foundation Gala that night. It only took Adrian a few phone calls to get permission to perform at the Place des Vosges, rent the stage and audio equipment, and hire an assembly crew. And his father had agreed to the donation matching proposal easily enough. Alia made arrangements with the hospital and was taking care of handling the funds. Marinette had designed the flyer, and all four of them had spent a day passing them out and hanging them in businesses around the area. As a result, the park was more crowded today than usual. I'm so proud of Nino! Marinette enthused, eyes sparkling as she watched him in action. I've known him for years! He's only ever done his own thing! He's stepping out of his comfort zone! Yup, coming out of his shell! Marinette raised an eyebrow at him, but went back to cheering Nino on. Speaking of stepping out of comfort zones, Marinette seemed to have gotten a lot more comfortable with him over the past couple of weeks. Adrian assumed it was just because she knew her other classmates much longer than she had known him, but she had always acted nervous around him, different from how he saw her act around others. He guessed she just took a while to open up to new people. Despite the misunderstanding when they first met, she had struck him as a nice girl and Adrian admired the talent and kindness that he saw in her later, so he had been patient in letting the friendship develop. Lately though, she had been much more present in his life than ever before, and he found himself enjoying her company. No, not just that, he had started to rely on her company. When she wasn't with him, he had subconsciously started cataloging things he wanted to tell her the next time they met. And she put up with him even if he couldn't entertain her, like the time she agreed to come over while he was practicing. He appreciated that since he didn't have much free time to just hang out. She was also the only one that he could kind of talk to about his depressing love life. It was unexpectedly easy to confide in her about Ladybug without giving any details, which made the situation more bearable. It was funny, cause she had also been the first person he'd told about his love for Ladybug even as Cat Noir. She had a welcoming quality about her that made it easy to open up to her, and she never pried or made him feel guilty. Suddenly, the peaceful ambiance was interrupted by a series of bright red energy-charged shots that pelted down on the park, most of them absorbing harmlessly into the ground, but a couple of them striking park goers. The people who had been hit seemed to get angry, one upending a picnic blanket full of snacks, and another kicking the dog he had been walking. Marinette and Adrian looked at one another. Marinette spoke first. Um, I better check on my parents. See you later. Yeah, I have to get going anyway. Bye. If Marinette's sudden departure at the Akuma's appearance seemed suspicious, it was lost on Adrian. He was preoccupied with the urgency to find an inconspicuous place to transform, and the anxiety about seeing Ladybug again. He couldn't help but feel excited to see her, but most of all, he wanted to fix the partnership between them. Ladybug's visit to him as Adrian had helped him realize that he inadvertently expected her to take up the slack in battle, and he had to admit sometimes he was so distracted by her that he didn't give his full attention to defeating the enemy, he just let her do all the planning. So he was trying to be different, and better. He wouldn't joke with her during the fight, he'd pay attention, he'd watch her back without getting incapacitated. The park was too crowded, so Adrian had to dart behind one of the arches outside the park before he could call on Plag. As soon as the transformation was complete, he bounded back to the park, his stomach twisting into knots. All the unaffected civilians in the park had run away, and the rest, who had been hit by the Akuma, were wreaking havoc. The Akuma, dressed in a comical red and black outfit with a yellow visor, cocked a giant bazooka-like weapon and pointed it at Cat Noir. I am malevolent, Ladybug and Cat Noir. The only good deed I'll do today is to get your miraculous for Hawk Moth. With these powers, no one will ever make me feel guilty for not wanting to do any good deeds. He fired, but Cat Noir dodged easily. The Akuma cocked the weapon again, but it was pulled aside by a yo-yo string. My lady, Cat Noir cried out. His heart betrayed him by doing a flip. As usual, they moved in perfect synchrony. He imagined himself as an extension of Ladybug, 
feeling her energy beside him as if it were part of him, as if they were two halves of one body. When she moved toward the Akuma taking the offensive, he watched and covered her weak spots. When she needed to take a step back to evaluate, he engaged the enemy. He understood without being told what she wanted him to do and acted without hesitation, trusting her completely. The world around them was slowly devolving into chaos as more and more of the delinquent turned citizens vandalized walls, dropped litter, stole and sought revenge. But Cat Noir's priority was to protect Ladybug. No matter what happened around them, as long as she was safe, her healing spell would return everyone to normal. She was like the queen in a game of chess, the power piece. They managed to corner the supervillain, but still had no clues on where the akumatized object was. Time for a little luck, milady. Ladybug called a lucky charm, and a pocket gaming console fell out of the sky. The smirk on Ladybug's face told Cat Noir she had an idea. Hey, Malevolent, you didn't want to do any good deeds today, huh? How about a game instead? You'll play with me, Ladybug? He dropped the bazooka to his side and pulled out a game console from a hidden compartment. Immediately, Ladybug snagged it with her yo-yo and flung it at Cat Noir, who had a cataclysm ready. That was too easy. I guess that should teach us not to underestimate a lucky charm. After purifying the butterfly, Ladybug and Cat Noir knelt at the victim's sides. He was a scrawny boy around their age, looking down at the ground with a forlorn expression. Ladybug handed him back the game console. I hate Heroes Day, he said. Everyone said I was selfish, but I just don't know what kind of good deed to do. I'm only good at video games. Ladybug patted his arm reassuringly. It's not that hard to do a good deed. Even smiling at someone can brighten their day. She helped the victim to his feet. The lady's right, Cat Noir agreed. Just give it a try. Thanks, Ladybug. His expression lifted. Hey, I had an idea. That's the spirit. Ladybug encouraged him with a wink. As the boy walked away, Cat Noir saluted at Ladybug and turned to go. Ladybug grabbed his belt. Not so fast, kitty. Cat turned around, surprised. What's going on, Cat Noir? Are you mad at me? What? Mad? I'm not... Huh? He was utterly confused. He thought he had done well that day. Ladybug put her hands on her hips and stared him down, her blue eyes boring into his. You've been acting weird since the last Akuma fight. You didn't even flirt with me today. You want me to flirt with you? No, it's just weird when you don't. Uh, okay. Cat Noir had actually expected her to appreciate his efforts. I thought you didn't like it, so I tried to tone it down. Ladybug's confrontational attitude deflated into confusion. Oh, why? Cat Noir shrugged. I just wanted to be a better partner. So you're not mad? Cat Noir shook his head. Oh, that was, um, considerate of you. Cat gave her an uncharacteristically shy smile. But it's okay to just be yourself. You don't have to change the way you act around me. I thought it would make you happy. Ladybug softened, putting a hand on his arm. Thanks, kitty. That's sweet. But you are fine the way you were. Cat's eyes sparkled. You liked my jokes? Ladybug crossed her arms as if she didn't want to encourage him too much. I just like you to be yourself, but don't be too distracting in battle. Distracting, huh? Cat Noir leaned into her personal space. Ladybug resolutely stood her ground, but looked away to create distance. Do I distract you, milady? She surprised him by suddenly turning to him with a smile, flicking his bell. There's my kitty. Her face was mere inches away. 
Caught off guard, Cat Noir flushed and took a step back to regain his composure. Y yeah um, anyway, there's a charity drive going on in the park. You want to make an appearance? Their miraculouses beeped in tandem. Looks like we're out of time, Cat. His face fell. Meet me back at the park in 10 minutes? And his heart was bursting. She was actually agreeing to spend time with him without an Akuma in the picture? The flame of hope, which he had tried to douse again and again, flickered back to life. These beats are pretty awesome, though my favorite artist is Jagged Stone. After making a public appearance at the park and saying a few words on stage about the importance of ordinary citizens participating in charity, Ladybug and Cat Noir had retreated to a nearby rooftop to enjoy the music and hang out for a little while. Cat Noir was blissful, his earlier resolution far from his mind. Jagged Stone, huh? Are you kidding me? I like Jagged Stone too! I hate to say it, but you have good taste. Cat Noir fished for another random fact about her. You play Ultimate Mecha Strike 3. You remember that? Of course. I remember everything about you, milady. You like fashion too, don't you? He thought, recalling the photo shoot. But he wasn't supposed to know that, so he didn't say anything. Ladybug pushed his shoulder playfully. Stop it. You're the love of my life, after all. He meant it as a half-joke, but his voice came out more serious than he intended. Cat Noir... Cat Noir mentally kicked himself. He hadn't wanted to make her feel uncomfortable, but his filter with Ladybug was defective. He didn't want his feelings to get in the way, but they had a way of coming out. He braced himself for whatever she was about to say. I thought I told you. I like someone else. He had heard the words before, but this time he knew that person was him, as a civilian. And while in another universe that would have made him happy, the bitter irony burned his heart like acid. Cat Noir lost his humor, feeling depressed again. I don't expect you to return my feelings, he mumbled. I just can't help loving you. Kitty, Ladybug said in a chiding tone. Don't make this difficult for both of us. He knew he should just drop it, but the wound had been opened and the next words spilled out like poison. So, how do you know this lucky guy? He didn't even know who he was mad at. Maybe Hawk Moth. He's just a friend from school. No more questions. You know I hate lying. From school? She went to his school? Kat's eyes widened and he perked up. He had expected her to deflect the question. Did she mean to give him a hint? Hey, LB, why do we have to hide our identities anyway? Ladybug eyed him sharply. You know why. I know Hawk Moth can't know. Kat Noir countered. But why not each other? It's too risky. Ladybug warned. If either of us gets akumatized, it won't be hard for him to find out. But don't you think we might know each other in real life? He knew he was pushing it, but he felt like the answer was right there. Cat Noir, Ladybug said sharply, fixing him with a cold, firm stare. Yes, we might know each other, but where do you think you're going with this? Once we know, that's it. There's no going back. Are you ready for that? Cat Noir withered under her gaze. He knew she was right. I'm sorry. I went too far. No more prying, Ladybug snapped. She unhooked her yo-yo and drew back her arm, ready to throw it. Ready to leave. No, wait! She paused. Please don't leave, LB. I'm sorry, I'll stop. She eyed him critically. Please, stay. She put her yo-yo back and sat down reluctantly. I can't stay long anyway. I have somewhere to be tonight and I need to get ready. I won't keep you captive for long, milady. 
he said gently. Ladybug groaned at his bad pun, but her lips quirked up. Did I spot a smile, Bugaboo? Don't push it, kitty. Are the puns starting to bug you? Okay, okay. No need to overdo it. Ladybug laughed, ruffling his hair. Soon after, Nino finished his set and Oya came on stage to thank everyone for their donations. Ladybug and Cat Noir joined her to give their support to the cause. As Cat Noir bounded home, his heart was a cocktail of emotions. Warmth from the time spent with Ladybug. Excitement from the feeling that he was so close to knowing her identity. Cold unease, thinking that might not necessarily be a good thing. Disgust at himself for falling back into his old habits and saying all the wrong things after he had tried so hard to be better to her today. Detransforming in his room, Adrian sighed and dropped onto the bed, emotionally drained. Ugh, back to obsessing about Ladybug. There were three hours before he was expected to be at the venue for the Agrest Foundation Gala. He needed to get in some practicing, take a shower, and make himself presentable. So busy thinking about your love, you don't even care about me anymore. Plague whined. You know where the cheese is, Adrian grumbled. You're a mess, kid. Pull yourself together. Plague flew off to the cheese cabinet. Ignoring Plague, Adrian curled onto his side. Craving some human interaction to plug the empty feeling in his heart, he unlocked his phone and texted Marinette. Ready for tonight? We'll pick you up at 6 p.m. Her response came in a few seconds later. Can't wait. See you at 6. Some of the negativity clouding his heart dissipated. He was excited to be going to this event with a friend for the first time ever. He felt okay enough to practice. Sighing, he got to his feet and plodded to the piano. The gala was a stiff event as usual. Marinette and Adrian had been seated at a large, round table with Natalie, Adrian's bodyguard, and a couple of Gabriel's business associates. His father made an appearance on stage, but didn't sit with them. Adrian didn't know where he spent the evening. The program was a mix of speeches with performances, and the recipients of various grants from the Agrest Foundation were announced throughout the night. Though the formal setting didn't allow for much chatting, Adrian was glad to have Marinette's company. He was usually bored out of his mind at events like these, but with her there, they could throw facial expressions at one another and whisper comments and jokes about the speeches and performances. Adrian was the last performance. He wasn't nervous. His father had made him perform at these types of events ever since he had been deemed worthy of playing for others around the age of seven, so it was more routine than anything. But he was on edge, wondering what his father would think. After playing the last chord and taking a bow, he instinctively scanned the audience for his father's face, wondering if his expression would be one of disapproval, stern acceptance, or one of the rare smiles he had only seen a few times in his life. But he didn't see his father at all. Disheartened, he took the backstage exit and navigated the halls back to the main ballroom entrance, feeling like his father's absence had sucked the energy out of him. Unexpectedly, Marinette was waiting in the hall outside the ballroom, holding a single pink rose wrapped in cellophane. Giving him a warm smile, she held it out to him as he approached. You did great. It was beautiful. He accepted the rose, touched by the gesture. Thanks, Marinette. You know, my mom used to give me a rose every time I performed, ever since I was a kid. It was like a tradition. Marinette's eyes were soft. You miss her, don't you? Yeah. He looked at the rose. The crinkle of the cellophane in his fingers felt bittersweet with nostalgia. I really do. He was surprised when he felt her take his free hand in both of hers. It's okay to be sad. Just remember, you're not alone. He looked up. She had a faint smile and was looking at him with those soft eyes. All that he had been feeling, about Ladybug, about his father, about his mother, may be intensified by having tapped into the well of raw emotion to pour into his piano playing, 
melted into the warmth of her gaze and he couldn't help it. Tears started leaking from his eyes. He turned away, embarrassed. Sorry, I don't know why I'm crying. It's okay to cry in front of me. She pulled him into a hug, rubbing his back comfortingly. He leaned against her shoulder for a minute, tears flowing silently before regaining his composure. Sorry, I shouldn't be acting like this. It's okay, there's no one watching you, Marinette reassured him. The sound of applause came faintly from inside the ballroom. Since there was only one speech on the program after his performance, Adrian guessed the event was drawing to a close. They'll be coming out soon, he said, sniffling and pulling away. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and fix my face. Can you wait for Natalie and my bodyguard? Sure. As he stepped away, her eyes seemed a little red and her cheeks and nose a little flushed. Had she been crying too? Surely not. You okay? Of course. Her smile was as bright as ever. Maybe he had imagined it. Just before entering the bathroom, he turned back to look at her. She had posted herself near the ballroom door to wait and gave him a little wave. Wearing a cream dress with floral embroidery swirling from the bottom hem, paired with a blush pink cropped blazer that went nicely with her skin tone, she looked very pretty. The smile that he returned came easily to his lips, crinkling his eyes, as if the cry session on her shoulder had softened him and crumbled away the outer layer of his heart. He waved back and slipped into the bathroom. So, did you make it back to the park after the Akuma fight? Adrian had been so preoccupied with Ladybug, he had forgotten to look for Marinette. He only remembered to ask her now, in the car on the way back from the gala. Um, no. Papa needed help in the bakery. Really? He remembered that she had to go as soon as the Akuma appeared. She hadn't come back? Marinette nodded, turning to look out the window. The lights cast by passing street lamps streaked across her face. Adrian watched her carefully. She seemed to be retreating into herself, discouraging him from continuing this line of conversation. Was she hiding something? Ladybug's words from earlier suddenly echoed in his mind and he noticed her choice of words. A friend from school. Ladybug said, friend. I'm her friend? Adrian felt a pit in his stomach. His heart rate increased. He remembered what Ladybug had said. Once we know, that's it. There's no going back. Are you ready for that? He swallowed and looked out the other window. They were pulling up to the back door of Marinette's apartment. As the car rolled to a stop, he turned to look at her. She grabbed her clutch purse and gave him a polite peck on the cheek. Thanks for inviting me tonight, Adrian. Thank you for coming. He lowered his voice so his bodyguard and Natalie wouldn't hear. I know it was a boring event, but it was a lot more fun with you there. It wasn't too bad, Marinette said, then leaned in to whisper in his ear, giving his hand a comforting squeeze. Cheer up, okay? Text me any time. She slipped out of the car. She waved as she closed the door, and then again at the entrance to her apartment. Then she was gone, and the car pulled away. Adrian touched his cheek where she had kissed him, his heart pounding. The faint floral scent of her perfume hung in the air and in his memory, from the moments of closeness they had shared. It was familiar. And Ladybug had called him, the boy she liked, her friend. Adrian was Ladybug's friend outside the mask. Was it really that obvious? When had Marinette started spending more time with him? Wasn't it the day she gave him those Ladybug macarons? The day after he kissed Ladybug? His mind raced through all his memories of Ladybug and Marinette from the day he had met them looking for clues. That's right! Hadn't he met them both on the same day? Ladybug introducing herself was clumsy. The history textbook. Marinette's creativity and eagerness to help her friends. 
The way Marinette was the only one who knew about Lila's true nature. The way she disappeared after he brought her to the Eiffel Tower in the fight with Bifana. Ladybug's absence during Marinette's date with the Illustrator. Had he ever seen her and Ladybug together in one place? Was today the first time she had an excuse to leave when an Akuma appeared? She liked fashion. She designed Jagged Stone's album cover. She was a boss at Ultimate Mecha Strike 3. Adrian's head spun. Wait! The word escaped his lips in a daze. The car slowed. Yes, Adrian? Natalie's cold voice prompted him. He licked his lips, which had gone dry. Go back. He hadn't even registered making the decision to do so. Natalie gave him a puzzled look, but nodded at the bodyguard who circled around back to Marinette's house. His body feeling cold and shaky, Adrian got out of the car and paused before ringing the bell. It was late and he didn't want to wake Marinette's parents in case they were asleep already. He texted her instead. Hi Marinette, I'm outside your door. Can you come down? She didn't respond, but he heard footsteps approaching and the door opened within seconds. She was still wearing the cream-colored dress, having removed the blazer. Adrian, did I forget something? She asked, confused. N no. He felt like he couldn't breathe. His hunch had to be right. Everything fit, and her clue had been too big. Now that he saw it, he couldn't unsee it. It was undoubtedly Ladybug standing in front of him. Marinette. Why hadn't he recognized those blue eyes? Eyes he had looked into so many times, longing to see behind the mask. He glanced at her earlobe. She had black stud earrings, the exact same size and shape as Ladybug's. Why hadn't he noticed? Adrian. Marinette's eyebrows were knit in concern, her voice urgent. What's going on? Are you okay? You're not sick, are you? She pushed back his bangs to touch his forehead. He realized he was acting weird and shook his head to snap out of it. Nothing. I just wanted to... Never mind. Sorry. Good night, Marinette. He pulled away and walked back to the car briskly. He had to stop before he did or said something he would regret. At least now he was sure. He heard Marinette call his name again, but she didn't come after him. He felt like he had jumped into a pool of ice-cold water, still registering the shock. We can go now, he told Natalie, voice husky. He didn't trust himself right now. He needed to think before he could face Marinette. Ladybug. As the car pulled away, he snuck a glance back at Marinette. She was still standing in the doorway in that floral embroidered cream dress, a mystified expression on her face. He had seen it before on Ladybug, in the tent on the day of their photo shoot together. He had no doubt. And as they pulled away, he saw Marinette's receding form differently. Instead of a shy and gentle friend, he saw the same strength he had glimpsed in Ladybug that night in his room. The strength to stand by him and help him through his emotions, knowing it was her own superhero self he was pining after. He turned over the rose in his hands, a pink rose symbolizing friendship. She liked him, but she had pushed him away as Ladybug and had been putting work into a relationship that could be real, giving him the time and space he needed to heal without rushing or pressuring him by bringing her own feelings into the mix. His phone buzzed. It was a text from Marinette. Are you sure you're okay, Adrian? You seemed upset. I'm a little worried. A lump formed in his throat and his heart twinged as the realization came crashing down on him. He loved her. So much it hurt. I'll be okay, I promise. He hesitated, then typed out another text, just in case. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't worry. It was a minute before she responded. Okay. I trust you. Good night. They would talk soon. Finding out had been an accident. He hoped she wouldn't be angry. If he told her. 
Should he? Maybe not. But how was he going to keep this from her? It didn't seem right to hide that he knew. He wouldn't reveal his own identity unless she wanted him to. This whole time they had been so close to one another. The truth was bound to come out sometime or other, wasn't it? It was inevitable, wasn't it? Thank you for listening to Right Hand Man. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or leave a like if you want to hear more. And if you like Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction and comic dubs, why not subscribe? Until next time!